Hello viewers and welcome to Daily Politics. On this program we discuss issues around politics, policy and governance. I'm Hamza Idris, taking over from Abdullah Ahmed who held forth while I was away. Thank you Abdullah for a good job. On TV's tonight, Senator Abubakar Kari, the Deputy National Chairman North of the All Progressives Congress, has been appointed as the Acting National Chairman of the party. This decision comes after Senator Abdullah Adamu, the National Chairman, resigned from his position. As per the party's constitution, when a national chairman resigns, the deputy national chairman from the respective zone assumes the acting role. Kerry and several other members of the National Working Committee had met at the party's national secretariat in Abuja amid tight security measure in place. Some of the officials present at the meeting with Kerry included the national vice chairman from different zones as well as the deputy national Secretary of the party. Sources confirmed that Senator Adamu had sent his resignation letter to the Chief of Staff of President Femi Bajabia Miller on Sunday around 4 p.m. Rumors, however, suggest that the resignation might have been prompted by a potential plot to embarrass Adamu during the upcoming party meetings, which were originally scheduled for July 10 and 11, but were postponed indefinitely. However, Adamu has not confirmed any specific reason for his resignation and has chosen not to comment until President Tinubu returns from the AU meeting. Have a look. The NWC wishes to inform you the resignation of the National Chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, CON and that of the National Secretary, Senator Yola Omishori, CON. And with this development, and according to the Constitution of the All Progressive Congress, APC, it is now incumbent on my humble self, Senator Abuka Kerry, as the Deputy National Chairman North, to assume the office of the Acting National Chairman of the All Progressive Progressives Congress APC, and subsequently also the Deputy National Secretary, Barrister Festus Fuanta will now assume the office of the Acting National Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, APC. And with these recent developments in the change of leadership, I'd like to inform everybody here that the proposed National Caucus meeting slated for Tuesday the 18th, 20, July 2023, and the National Executive Committee meeting of the All Progressive Congress slated for Wednesday, 19th July 2023, has hereby been postponed. And this postponement will be will not be indefinite, but it will be uh, a new date will be communicated in the near, near future. Um, um, there, there are no allegations at this point. The, the two individuals have resigned voluntarily, and that is what uh, is available at this moment. And joining me to discuss this and more, we have in the studio a chieftain of the APC and a former commissioner of information in Adamawa State, I'm Sajo. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And uh, we also pleasure. have uh, in the studio Shapiro Suleiman, the head of the politics desk at Trust TV, who was at the APC National Secretariat. He's going to give us a lowdown of what transpired today. Shapiro, welcome to the program. Thank you very and much. And I'm compelled to start Hamza with you. Yeah. I, because uh, mm. you have had Senator Abu Kari saying uh, no allegations. Mm. Could this be true? No allegations against Omisori, no allegations against Abdullah Adam. 
Well, uh, the, the question was actually thrown at him, you know, when he asked for uh, feedback. Question, questions from journalists, actually. Okay. Yeah. So someone asked that question. But if you listen to him carefully, he said, there is no allegation at this point. So what that means, perhaps, it could come up later. Mm. But there is no allegation at this point. What happened is that the principal officers uh, voluntarily resigned. As he said, yeah, uh, uh, we are aware of uh, you know issues around misappropriation, alleged misappropriation, yeah, of um, funds generated during so sales of forms mm. and all that. But um, of course, you know the issue around um, the leadership of the party has been there for mm. quite a while. But did you envisage Adamu leaving yesterday? Yes, I actually I did. As a political reporter. Yes. You know, I think uh, that we did a report last week or so um, alluding to the possibility of such development uh, when there was altercations, if you like, or back and forth between the national chairman and the executive, so to speak, uh, in respect to the leadership of the National Assembly. Uh, you know, the minority, I mean, the majority leadership yeah. uh, and so on, which he actually disowned. He said the party is not aware of. And yeah. All that. Uh, so from there you begin to see this uh, the friction, signals you know yeah uh, certainly all is not well mm -hmm. and you remember he was also summoned for a meeting at the villa to trash all of that yeah um, and i also had the privilege of engaging uh, i think the the one of the officers uh, you know very close to the office of the chairman mm -hmm. uh, who actually speaks on his behalf and he did tell me that yes they are aware of all of this uh, schemings and what have you within the party. Okay. Uh, but um, the belief is that uh, Senator Abdullah Adamu is one who actually work with, um, I mean, what is obtainable or what is... Uh, uh, what really happened what and is why ground, he took the decision. Yeah, constitutionally. Mm. He looked at issues as they unfold. He wouldn't want to comment on that. But he also did not foreclose the fact that there could be a situation that will warrant the chairman to 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 leave for instance yes okay i'm a sergeant <laughs> the, the national chairman i mean the removed national chairman or the resigned mm -hmm. or national chairman he wasn't at the apc secretariat uh, this morning mm -hmm. but omisore was there mm -hmm. and should i say he was embarrassed and turned out because it's like they didn't allow him enter right Oh, there are, you know, different accounts of what happened okay. today. He was actually at the secretariat. Uh, some say he was denied entry into the meeting yes. uh, hall. Uh, others say he actually came to submit his resignation letter. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, this one issue that we couldn't uh, get verified by the acting national chairman. As we speak. Yeah, yeah. but actually he was there. Uh, and then he left, you know, uh, at the point the meeting was still on. Halfway into the meeting, he, he left the, the, the venue and yeah. he couldn't speak to the press as, as demanded. Okay, I, I ask Shapiro <laughs> <the> first question <laughs> as to what uh, Senator Habukari said that uh, as of today, there was no allegation. They, they have received the uh, resignation letter. But in my intro, you, you've, you've heard what I said yeah. that something was actually cooking towards removing him in the event that. Um, he didn't resign. Do you think what he did now, he has taken them by surprise? Or they actually showed him the signal? No, I, I think, um, I still want to believe that uh, the resignation was not voluntary. I still want to believe that uh, the resignations were forceful. Because uh, the condition, you know, uh, if not for a country like Nigeria, no leader allows himself to reach the point where the national chairman and national secretary had reached. When you are leading an organization and you discover at some point in time that the general consensus and the thinking of the generality of the members of that organization do not tally with your own, mm. you have no business leading such a group. Yeah. It, uh, it started long before now. Yeah, which will actually go when we allow um, so, Shapiro so, to, to leave. But, but what but I must tell you is yeah. that um, even mm. on Mishore, you know, who, who should not have even come to the secretariat to whatever happens, whether he was embarrassed or he was, he shouldn't have come. 
Yeah. Because the handwriting was on the wall as of last night. Wow. Everybody in that is uh, carefully following events knew as of last night that, look, nothing was going to save these two. Oh, my God. Uh, by, 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 by the end of losing meeting of today. Oh, oh. Um, uh, a few before I let you go. Mm. Omishore, you know, I saw his convoy. I saw the video. I wasn't really happy. Mm. I mean, I'm not a politician, but the way, mm. you know, he, he entered, you know, I saw mm. some little, you know, ripples there. And then later, mm. you know, he entered his vehicle and left. Mm. Do you see maybe him and Abdullah Adamu anytime soon? I mean, when they decide to hold neck because they are neck members that's right now, mm -hmm. do you foresee them coming or they have parted ways with the apc as a reporter of well, that well as party men i should expect that they they, they the, if the, they are invited they should yeah. come for the meeting okay. but as for what happened today uh, just like my elder brother has said um the handwriting is actually on the wall because even the the the, the the space, you know, the parking space reserved for the national chairman yes. was actually occupied today by the acting, the new acting national chairman. The, the, the space where Abdullah was supposed to park his That's vehicle. precisely where he parked his car. Wow. And there you know that, even before you heard of anything, you know, people begin to read meaning to it that, okay, perhaps he's going to assume the leadership. And, and that's what happened. Wow. So, so for a missionary, um, yes, his, his space was still reserved. I think he parked. And you saw how the convoy left. Yeah. In that video, you can see, you know, he left, um, I wouldn't want to say unceremoniously. Yeah. But certainly. You know, not at the any, time he's supposed to leave. Not any, since that was about the time the NWC mm. meeting. Exactly. And you could see only the, the dates, you know, the security details and what have you that have been trying to even fave way for him while the others are still holding the meeting, you know, inside the. And the let me building. even make it very clear to you. Yes. Uh, once their resignation is accepted and an acting chairman and an acting secretary are there, they are no longer members of NEC constitution. Wow. As party chair? Um, no, they Former are party chair? No, they are not. Oh, they are because not. I think, um, anyway, we, 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 yeah. we start to be corrected. Yeah, but as I, yeah, with the tradition, I think uh, that's what happens, what prevails in the PDP. I've seen uh -huh. former national chairman attending, uh, attending yeah, such right. meetings. So, I think that is where I also... Mm. also the, 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 that's what their constitution... Provides. Okay, that is PDP, oh, okay. but as for APC, a different ball game. Right. All right, Shafi, thank mm -hmm. you very much for coming okay. to the program, okay. and uh, we will still conscript you <laughs> it's, it's from not, the program in the coming days, because it's so many pleasure. things, you know, happen at the that's right. APC. Uh, thank it's you for coming. It's my pleasure. And viewers, we'll go on a short break. When we return, the conversation continues with our message. Don't go away. Welcome to Trust TV, where we document the Nigerian story. Our programming showcases the rich culture and diversity of Nigeria. We strive to amplify the voices that make our nation unique. Our programming is designed to take you on a journey through the different tastes of entertainment in our country. We showcase the best of Nigerian culture, from traditional craft to cutting-edge technology. Our team of expert journalists are dedicated to unveiling the intricacies of our culture and telling the untold stories that binds us all. And let's not forget the food. Nigeria has diverse and flavorful cuisines, some of the favorites to millions across the world. What is Nigeria? without its people, their passions, and their talent. Trust TV is not just a channel, it's a platform that brings you closer to everything that makes Nigeria great. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. If you are just joining, you are watching Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow us across our social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and watch us live on YouTube. 
I still have in the studio, Jaime Sajo, former commissioner for information in Adam Awasena, the chief chain of the All Progress with Congress. Welcome back. Thank yes, you. before we went on break, I, I, I sought your opinion on uh, the unceremonious exit, but your response was really punchy of sort when you said that uh, why they waited this long. This How long. do you mean? How do you mean? Exactly. Um, you see, this is a democracy. The beauty of democracy is that it provides choices, it provides preferences. Mm. But when you are leading a group within a democratic setup, your preferences and choices are narrow. They are narrow. They are narrow. Uh, when you make me chairman of a political party, mm. every member of the political party is my own. I will bow to the superior position of the membership, because that is where the reservoir of my legitimacy comes from. Okay, the membership of the party. The membership of the party. So where the, what the membership said they like is what I should, I should like. Not, I don't have preferences as the leader. Now, the crisis with uh, His Excellency Abdullah, Senator Abdullah, started from the poor moment he said he had a preferred candidate, he had a, a preferred person for... Or rather the NWC, as he claimed that time. Well, we heard it from him. Okay. You know, as members of the party. As the members of the party. That he, they had a preference of who should fly the flag of the party uh, during the 2023 election. That was a most unfortunate statement from a leadership of a party. Uh, how, how, how do you mean, um, Ahmed? Because as far as the party is concerned, yes, they are supposed to lay a level playing field for whoever wants okay, to march. Okay, ahead of the primary election. Exactly. That's their job. The job is to create a level playing field for everybody. To say they have a preference, you know, that was actually, you know, the beginning of all this crisis. And then to make matters worse for them, that preference did not scale through. That, 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 that should be I'm a Lawal, exactly. the then Senate exactly. President. So, you see, w from that point onward, the rational thing to do is that whatever actions they take in respect of the person that became the candidate against their preference, whatever action they take, good or bad, will be assumed to be read from the perspective of the fact that Bosugoi Bayamuba. Wow, they didn't support us. They didn't support us. So that was the beginning. But again, you know, as the system was moving, mm. one of them, a very top member of the NWC, the National Vice Chairman Northwest. Yeah. Don't forget, Salu Northwest is the bastion of the APC. Whether one likes because of it or his not. numerical strength. The numerical strength and it's an alloyed support to the APC. Without the Northwest, the APC would not clinch the leadership of this country in an election. Wow. When the Vice Chairman Northwest raised very weighty allegations against the Chairman and the Secretary, it behoves them at that point in time to actually look clear themselves of that, those allegations. To but, come out openly and, and say, say what he said is not true. It's not true. Or to, to present superior arguments. These yeah. are the facts on table. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. Then the allegations began to multiply to a point where they said, well, they didn't even use the resources available to support the candidature of the person that eventually became the Which president. Which was the latest, I think, uh, for Salvo from Salvo Lukuma last that week. That became another... When Omishore and others, I think, accused him of being the, you know, the instead, ship in the... Instead of them to look for a solution to the lingering crisis within the party, yes, they even threatened or, or, or went to court. When the constitution of the party said any member that does not exhaust internal mechanisms and goes to court should be expelled from the party. But I think it was Sadhu Lukuman who first went to court. Don't you think he overshoot the runway? Because they wanted to take action against him without investigating the allegations he raised. Uh -huh. Put the allegations he raised on table. They, 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 there was a claim that the accounts of the party were audited. Mm. But the constitution of the party said the NWC 
the neck the end of the acting on behalf of neck will be the ones to appoint internal auditors it's not the chairman and secretary you see we they, cannot... they shouldn't be um the jury exactly. in their own no exactly. not even about being jury judge on jury but the constitution is very clear you cannot there are democratic instruments put in the constitution mm. to forestall a dictatorship and okay. the political party should be the last point where there would be any inkling of a dictatorship. But why do you think Senator Abdullah Adamu took this long? I, I know when, then, while, while growing up, also in the eighties, uh, you know, he was first secretary of APN yes. in all Benue Plateau. Yes. He rose to become the chairman of the party. He yeah. became governor. He became senator. Now, until yesterday national chairman of the party. Don't you think he has his facts? And maybe he wanted to achieve something. That was no, why no, no. He, what, what, he, he stayed foot on what that. Does, what does he want to achieve? When the National Assembly leadership was being coupled, he was, his position was at variance with the mainstream of the party. Yeah, as starting, starting from the at, position at, of no, the... At, as represented by the executive in this case. Yeah may not be a, a cut and dry democratic decision, but that the fact that there were, there were certain reasons for him to disagree with, with that meant that as the leader of the party, he's, he, 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 he's he lost losing, legitimacy? He, you know, he's losing grip of the leadership that keeps him the legitimacy. Now, after that, the National Assembly caucuses came up with their principal officers. Yes. And he said he doesn't agree with the principal This was officers. after, as you rightly said, he, he wasn't even in tandem with the party, uh, or I mean with the executive choice of um, uh, Akpabio Tajuddin for the leadership. Exactly. So with all of these things, he, it should have been very clear to him that... The no, game is over. The game is over. I cannot continue. To, to lead a group that does not hold the kind of views that I hold. Because leadership means that you provide a direction. But if the followership believes that their, their, the direction you are leading them is not the correct direction, democracy demands that you acquiesce to the position of the majority. Don't you think it was a matter of principle that um, he insisted on voicing out some of this? Number one that, of course, ahead of election, every other person has his own choice. And probably he felt Amal Lawal was his choice. And then the so-called cabal in the villa were with him. During the uh, selection of the male leadership of the National Assembly, um, he, he felt that the executive wanted to lord it over the political party. And going by his age, 76 now, Someone who had seen the part of the First Republic, who was part and parcel of the Second Republic, he wanted to assert his powers as national chairman of the party. For your information, the political class in this country had surrendered those powers. Those powers existed in the Second Republic. They no longer exist today. Oh my God. The very day mm. the political class in the different political parties agreed that the son should be bigger than the father. That was the last point. But is it the ideal? It may not be the ideal, but it's in the constitution. It started with PDP, now we have it in APC. That when, elected, when, when Obasanjo actually desecrated, sorry, yeah. the, to say that, you know, he was the one who brought we the concept said, of national leader. We said the president is the national leader of the party. The governor is the state leader of the party. We've already destroyed the, the, party the, supremacy. The party supremacy. So if I am elected as the national chairman and I swore with the constitution of the party and that constitution says the president of the country is the leader of my party, it is incumbent on me to accept the position of my national leader. So don't you think Abdullah Adam was in tandem with that personal principle and the principle that actually superseded before 1999. There was no principle in it. It's part of the political class that coupled up the political system that we are operating today. Mm. There's no principle in it. 
the only principle he has violated, if there is any principle, is the principle of fairness as a leader. And I tell you, a leader's responsibility is to provide a level playing field. A leader does not, a political party leader does not have a preference among his members in the contest for positions. Uh, and why do you think he refused to go before yesterday? Don't no, you, maybe is it that there are some forces with him, maybe within and without the party? No, I, I think um, probably I, I cannot hold brief for him. But what I believe is that um, somehow Abdullah Adamu may have, and Omishore may have believed that uh, they could navigate the crisis and arrive at an understanding. But they, they have almost navigated the crisis. But as they, they navigated the minefields within the More crisis, land they, they, mines. New, they, they themselves plant new ones for them. <laughs> as how? As how? Exactly. You, are, you have not settled the fact that you, have, uh, you had a, a preferred preference during the nomination of candidates. Mm. You went ahead. You, you, you now began to say again that you have preferred candidates for uh, National Assembly leadership. You have preferred candidates for principal officer. They are, built, they, are, they are the ones that are planting the minefields for themselves. Oh my God. And they are, they are accusing you of misapplying resources. Mm. You are not coming out to say, look. I'm clean. This is the, this is the resources that we got. From so 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 day to so 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 day, this is how much that came to the coffers. This is what we have used it for. These are the, the, the bills. These are the receipts. These are the if there are auditors that have audited, this is the audit statement. I take he takes money from the the, 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 the coffers, comes to Daily Trust, say, look, serialize this as paid advertisement for Nigerians to see that mm. I was open and transparent. I mean it, the, what, what does it take does it take much? To go open and tell the world that this is what I have, what I have done. You said most likely he didn't resign at his own volition. There are forces. Where are those forces as a member of the APC? Do you no, think maybe? I, I, I think he lost. He lost the sympathy of majority of members of the NWC, okay. which was very, which was very obvious. And of course, he he may have had his own loyalists and people who stood by him within the NWC. But as the journey progresses. Probably, you know, uh, time and age could really play tricks on some of us that are getting old. Mm -hmm. Probably, you know, he did not realize that at least even those ones that were behind him should be should, were entitled to some explanations as to some of the things that are going. Mm -hmm. And in the process, he left them also and went ahead with uh, Omishore alone. And by the time they were too far away, these people saw that they could not reach them. They turned back and met the other people and said, look, what are you people accusing these guys for? Wow. Say so, 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 and so, 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 okay. They have, we, have, we are close to them, but they have refused to give us details to prove you guys wrong. So they, eventually he lost everybody in the NWC. You said Don't as a forget, matter of, yeah. They have expanded the NWC. <laughs> That's one other thing that they did. Before there was no deputy that was in the NWC. Yeah, there are deputies in the NWC. Yeah, quite a number of them. Uh, so I can the see like NWC deputy publicity secretary, the, the, deputy the, the organizing, organizing secretary, secretary and so, all that. So now the NWC is even bigger, larger. You know, and for him to walk away and eventually end up standing alone or with his secretary with few. Uh, against the majority of these people, I think he would have like I said, when you, when you begin to grow old, actually age plays some funny tricks on you. But talking about principle, you, if, if you were in his position, will you have resigned would, earlier than now? From the very day that... How can you prove this to me? Have you well, well, I've, 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 I, have, I have held uh, political offices before. They may be small, but I've held political offices before. And at any point in time, something goes against my principles. I offer to resign. It was just my principle that two or three occasions refused to accept my designation. Your and principal? That, yes. Was it the governor the in Adama Yes. State? yes. You, you attempted to resign? I, I resigned. On what the ground? Government. What did he ask you to you do? Know, I was to do certain things. I was to issue certain statements, you know, that violated my own conviction. 
And I said, no. That is either that those statements are not issued at all. Yeah. Or that somebody else other than me should issue the statement and I would step aside. And I was willing. Wow. Because I hold it as a matter of principle that what you do not agree with, nobody should force you to do it. You see, this, this world, you know, uh, belongs to God. Mm. You will never get anything that God has not destined you to get. And you will never lose anything that God says is not the end for you. So I, I hold it that, well, we, we, we hold different points of view. I, I am not wealthy and I have I don't enjoy the benefit of stupendous wealth. I don't even need it. There is there's an amount of money if you give me today, wallahi, wallahi, I swear to God, God I leave it for you. You will not take it? I will not take it because I don't need it. I value my peace of mind. And so anything I will do that will prick my conscience later, I will not do it. In, in, in my years in service, you can ask, if you like, you can go and ask uh, Musa Lanyako, for example. Yeah. Anytime he, he, he will call me and say, look, come, tell me the truth. I can trust what you tell me. What, how did I earn that trust? It's because whatever I tell him, I say it with all sincerity. And that I'll be willing. Being his spokesperson. I'll be willing. Yeah. I'll be willing to lay my office to defend what I have said as being true. And he knew. And we operated like that for the period I operated with him. And we, 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 we enjoyed being together. When I was commissioner, on two occasions, or two or three occasions, I'd offered to say, look, if it is a must, that I must be the one to do this, I would rather leave the office than do it. Hey, I said, why? I said, because this is not supposed to be done. Wow. It's improper. Mm. And, and he will agree with you. And yeah, of course, naturally. Because, you know, the rational thing is to say, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you as a leader is to be given leadership and be denied people who can look you in the face and tell you the truth. Now, don't you think uh, it was a, actually a booby trap set up for Senator Abdullah Adamu, despite his age, uh, when he agreed to become the chairman of the party. Do you, first, do you think there was something? No, I, I think the, there, were, there, were, there, were, there were certain considerations. Okay. There were certain considerations. The, the party has gone through a lot of upheavals. Yeah, tumultuous uh, period. There was, there was, there was uh, a caretaker committee that was seemingly beginning to elongate its tenure. I was under Gobono Mwemalabuni. Mwemalabuni. Yeah. So the sentiment, Nearly two years. the sentiment nationally and the sentiment within the party was that, look, an elected leadership is far better than this situation that we are in. And so under that circumstance, uh, probably some other persons looked at what you looked at. Yeah. Let's look for somebody who has had varied political experiences yes. so that he can come to the party as a leader and build consensus within the party. Somebody that everybody in the party would, will respect. Because and he will call you out. Because of his accomplishment. Yeah. And somebody that will also be able to look at every member of the party as his own and work with everybody. Nobody foresaw a situation where Abdullah Adamu will eventually begin to say, I have preferences A, I have preferences A. And, and here lies the, the allegation what? that that was why he was brought as the chairman, to actually do the bidding of a certain cover. He should have avoided that, because that was a pitfall. He should have avoided that. But that's no, number one. Number two, uh, people feel that uh, Abdullah Adamu is sufficiently schooled in democracy mm. to realize that you know, dictatorship will be resisted no matter what. So when he came in as national chairman and decided to operate, you know, in a manner that forced one or two of his people to either voice their objection to the manner he was running the party, you know, either uh, publicly or privately, he should have realized that he was gravitating towards a dictatorship 
and that no political party can survive a dictator as its leader. You don't forget, one of the reasons why uh, Adam Sushimole suffered a setback mm. was that he was unable to hold neck meetings for a very long time. Yeah. And Abdullah Adamu knowing that inability to hold neck meetings, to put, to hold, to, to provide an account of the running of the party, both in terms of resources and in terms of administrative activities, to a, a superior body, in this case the, the neck, from time to time, had resulted in the downfall of Adams. He should have avoided that. He, and, he couldn't. And luckily for us, we are in an era where you do not argue lack of resources for not holding meetings. The resources are there. No, no, not because the resources are there. But there are several alternatives. If they can't hold face-to-face -face neck meetings, they could call virtual neck meetings. But, but why, why do you think leaders are averse to holding such meetings? Just to say, okay, but within so so period, this exactly. is what we've done, this is we what can we couldn't hold, do. We can hold this uh, meeting, fiscal meetings within this period, and because of resources within this period, since the constitution says one in a quarter, four times in a year, since the constitution says quarter one, we will hold a fiscal meeting, quarter two and three, we will hold virtual meeting, quarter four, we will hold fiscal meeting. Is it that they have certain things to hide? But the problem is the reports that will constitute the main agenda of this meeting are not prepared. But you have directors, party secretaries, you know, you have administration, you have finance, and that is their work. And when Senator Abdullah Abdel came, he replaced the directors, I agree with which you. are not actually politicians in any way. Yes. The directors at the party to do the administrative aspect. He replaced them with others. And in the process, what did the party lose? The party lost institutional memory. So the new people came. Because those guys were actually asked to go on leave. This is what I'm trying to tell you, that they went with the institutional memory of what went wrong and what went right. During the previous administration. So these guys came with a new one, and they knew that their loyalty lied with somebody, and they knew that a fiat, like the one that moved the other ones, could move them also from the secretariat. So probably they decided to just look at the situation as it's unfolded. I'm, I must tell you that uh, among some of the things that really happened that are unfortunate, and I'm a victim, mm. were party members who were given assignments, who were supposed to be remunerated, or at least the, the cost of the, 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 the expenses during the assignment needed to have been defrayed. I am one of those that you, you have know. not been settled. Exactly. I mean, re so, I mean, paid what you you spent. The cost that I but I went through, and my entitlements were not defrayed. So so, and I'm not the only one. There are many of us like that, you know. Because at some point, like I told you, we lost our institutional memory. So it's like the the reward system in APC is terrible. It's not even there. It's not actually a reward system. I I want you to understand. What okay. Way. You are in an office. There are custodians of institutional memories mm. in that system. When you upset the custodians of the institutional memories and you bring in new people, most probably there are a lot of pending issues that would have gone with it the other mm. thing. It, it may not be a deliberate attempt to refuse to do what is right, but it's absence of even knowledge of what is right. Because the people who are the custodians of the knowledge of what was right I, are, not, are not on seat. Now, what, what, are the, what are the implications of um, Abdullah Ademu, Omishore, and others exit from the um, APC? There are two options. Okay. There are two options. The first and most important option is that the party may rediscover itself and begin to learn from the errors of the Abdullah Adamu and Omishore group and correct those errors and reconfigure a new system that will strengthen the party. 
That's one. Okay. Two, there is the option also that this may generate further crisis. Hmm. And there is that the, potential. There is that potential developed into a situation where social cohesion within the NWC and by extension within other bodies of the party may also be affected. Meaning the party may likely explode. If For example, affected. already, you know, the long overdue neck of the party had to be postponed as a result of this crisis. The national caucus of the party has had to be postponed. And don't, don't forget, this is a party that has existed for this long without establishing its board of trustees. They say until they call it elders change, something. They have something elders. Until they change the constitution and change it to an advisory council. Yes. That advisory council has also not been constituted. As we speak. As we speak. So there are a lot of drawbacks. It appears the, the APC wasn't are, even ready to come to being. There are, there are crises within the different chapters of the party in different states. Those, Abdullah Adamu was to be the chairman of the Reconciliation Committee. Yeah. He prepared a report. He became the national chairman. It, was very, it would have been very easy and seamless for him to implement, implement those recommendations. Report. And I think and that was why he was partly, you know, that was partly responsible for him being rewarded to become the party but chairman, according to some sources. It turned out that he could not even implement his own report. And the party crisis continues to linger in different states of the Federation. I, I heard that um, there are some former governors yeah. and even some serving governors of the party who are with Abdullah Ademo. And with the latest development, if care is not taken, they will form an opposition within the APC. Do you foresee something like that? It's not, it's not it does, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see it happening. And I will tell you why. Okay. Uh, you see, we, 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 are, we are looking at events within the APC. In the days when governors actually determine what happens within the political parties, we wouldn't have reached this point. Yeah. The governors would have stepped in to create, you know, an enabling environment for a solution to be found. But the fact that this, the governors did not step in. You know, they also lost their powers. No. I think, you know, uh, the gravitas for political uh, dexterity mm. is... It's, it, we're losing it completely. It's diminishing yeah. by the day. Yeah, yes. Maybe losing. right from the recruitment process. I we're mean, losing. getting the right people we're for losing. the right position. We're losing it. You know, the, the politics itself is not as vibrant, it's not as interesting as it should be. You know, and the political parties we have in the country, my own party, the APC inclusive, are actually in, in, in real terms, not political parties. They're just special purpose vehicles for winning elections. They do not hold, you know, so the uh, ideology is in there. Ideology or principles or values that you will say, this is the value of my political party. The binding anybody, force. Anybody that is trying to erode those values. Yeah. Is, uh, what values are you eroding? Look, let me tell you, just go to the National Assembly. You know, we have a mishmash of all the political parties. Yeah. Uh, APC is there, PDP is there, uh, NNPP, NNPP is there, Labour Party, Labor is there, even Abga is yes. there. Yes, you have a YPP also. YPP mm. are all in the National Assembly. But when issues that have to do with money is appropriated to members of the National Assembly, whether it's for infrastructure or for, for David, did you hear any of no the opposition? Say, did you hear any of the members of the other opposition parties say, no, our party, we are concerned with national development. This, <laughs> have you seen it? No, because the parties are practically the same. They're just special purpose vehicles for winning elections. Once elections are over, you know, we become the same again. There are no, look, take Second Republic. 
I can talk for Second Republic because I was I was yes small, but I knew what was going. You're rather young, in, yeah. I was young. I was in secondary school, so I know what was going on. Take Second Republic. The UPN had free education, whether you As like it or not. Policy. You know free education. It was the UPN that said all states under UPN must establish a state university. Today. Lagos State University, Ogun State University, be, 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 should they, Oyo, those, Oyo mm. State, those universities are marking their 40th anniversary today. Because of, a a, because of policy and ideology. It was a policy. It was the policy of MPN to provide houses. Yes. Every local shagari government locals. you go to in Nigeria, there's a Shagari locus. Yeah, in, in all the local government areas. In, in opposition states, they gave them neglected bush bushes that's why the houses were not occupied but they still built the houses yeah despite the opposition yes they had green revolution you know what green revolution meant and you could easily identify with the green revolution you so many people when jack on day built hundreds of schools in fact thousands of schools in lagos some of them he horridly constructed with just, you know, makeshift structures so that he can accommodate all the people that are within oh, school, school age. age yeah. And he pushed them into school. So you could see the products of those institutions today playing vital roles in this mm. country. So you know these are what the parties are. Tell me, two PDP states in Nigeria or two APC states in Nigeria that are doing the same thing. A big problem. Now, <laughs> within a short time, yes. you know, because APC is still a very young political party. Yeah. They only produce two presidents, right? Yeah. The, the second one is just in, in the second month. But they have produced five chairmen. You have Chief Akande, you have Odigon, uh, Oyogu, you have Adam Soshomole, you have Mema Labuni, you have Abdelaya Adamu, and today we have... Um, Senator Abu Bakar Kari, five or six yeah. chairmen. Why are party chairmen being removed with executive pit? Yeah, because because we have we have established that's what I'm trying to say. We have institutionalized and democratic moves and made them democratic. Don't forget, Obasanjo accompanied, went to his chair, state uh, national chairman's house, mm. asked the wife to cook a pounded yam and negusi for them. They ate the pounded yam and negusi, and he came out of the house and said, I've, Remote they, I've removed him. So, we, 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 in the, when, during the days of the MPN, Akin Lawyer was the chairman of the MPN. Very powerful man. Shagari was the president. When they go for meetings, Shagari sits on the side. Akiloye presides. Akiloye was the leader of the party. <laughs> on party matters, Akiloye never went to Dodan Barracks or wherever Shagari it was. Is Shagari that... that came to the party secretary to meet Akiloye. This was how it was. I, 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 Waziri I, Ibrahim. Yes, of GNPP. Broke away from NPP when they said they would not make him both national chairman and presidential candidate. And when they asked him, he said, presidential candidate is simply an applicant. It's the national chairman that is actually in charge of the party. Wow. That was his, his words. So he broke away and did GNPP. And where he became he the chairman, chairman and the candidate. And candidate. So at that, and he produced Mahmoud Gweni. At that, at that point, you know, the national chairman of the party was the most powerful figure in the party. Can Tinibu make a difference? Because, because while researching no, the for this program, yeah. of the parties have now pronounced elected people. I mean, can, as the can, can Tinibu change this? Because while, of course, we have run out of time, but I am compelled to ask this question. Yeah. I know that Tinibu had hand in the emergence of Akonde. He had hand in the emergence of Oyogu. He had hand in the, almost all of them. He, in one way or the other, directly or indirectly, he had hand no, in the I, I, I think, let me put it the way, this way for okay. you, please. The, uh, His Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinobu, has been a politician, yeah. you know, an astute politician, and somebody who had uh, made politics almost a vocation. Yeah. He understand the nuances of politics. And so because of that, he, 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 he understands how to maneuver within the political space to get 
what he believes is right for the system. Okay. He has been doing that. But to say President Bolame Tinubu will take a sword and cut off his own neck, and it, it's, I don't see it as, as happening. He will not change the constitution and, and reduce his powers as the leader of the party uh, and hand it over to a, to a chairman, no. Meaning there is no end in sight no, to the no, crisis? No, no, no. There is end in sight. Okay, he, finally. He will provide uh, the, the political will to, to enable or the political enablement to make the party function effectively. All right. That I can assure you. All right. Thank you very much. I'm a Sergeant Former Commissioner for Information in Adam House and a Chieftain of the All Progressive Congress for coming to the studio for this Thank program. You. We have to have much. you again. My pleasure. My pleasure. Always. And viewers, that's a wrap on today's program. But before we go, what are your thoughts on plans by the federal government to commence a conditional cash transfer of 8,000 naira to 12 million households for six months? Do you think this is enough to cushion the impact of the full subsidy removal? Join us on Daily Politics Live on Friday to share your thoughts on this issue as the telephone line will be open for you to call in and contribute. Thanks for watching and to join us again. I'm Hamza Idris.